Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to Mothman 1966, a pixel art visual novel um, developed by LCB Game Studio and published by Chorus Worldwide Games. Um, now, as, uh, well, to be honest, my Friday time slot for videos is relatively wide open. I haven't really decided on what to fill it with, and I didn't want to basically just put another episode of one of my other two existing series on here. So I thought, well, I have a load of indie titles that I haven't played, like small indie titles. I would really like to sew them off on the channel and basically do long-ish videos of them. So my plan was every Friday, um, we'd basically go through and play these short games um probably do like a single long episode so we get a good chunk of the game out of the way each time and um aiming at titles which really don't take like a long time or maybe go back and do like a title that does but like do it like as a big a, a long like an hour long episode and just edit some of the slower bits out i don't know i'm still experimenting what to put up on friday um because there's stuff I want to play, like there's this, I want to return to Scarlet Hollow, um, Enter Elysium as well, a whole bunch of other things. Like I've really got into, ever, ever since playing Scarlet Hollow, I've really got into visual novels. Well, at least some of them anyway. Uh, see, uh, Scarlet Hollow set that France, set that uh, sort of category of games quite hard to beat, unfortunately, because it's a very good series. But let's see if Moth Men can scratch that itch. Okay, so we got the prologue. Press enter to continue. Three red, three red and five black in the discard pile. Of the six cards facing up on the counter, two are red and four black. One second, folks. I'm just going to see if I can, well, if I can fix this. So I'm not a fan of some things right now. Hold on. That's better. Okay, so it's just the, the sort of ticking sort sound in the background and the, the clicking sound as you basically put stuff through. Of the six cards face up on the counter, two are red and five are black. Halt. So red is a, so red in, so five red in all and nine black. You have no more moves. So you have to bet now. Let's go with red card. With so many black cards to draw, to draw, cards drawn, it feels natural to choose red. Numbers should be on your side. Even though you've already chosen, you decide to stay away from the counter. You can't bear losing again. I do like the pixel art style. Reminds me of like the early like 1980s, 1990s sort of like pixel art games, which I think was something that they were going for. Long pause. You think of your grandma, Elsa, trying to win at solitaire for over 60 years. You take a deep breath and keep sweeping. Elsa's been paralyzed from the waist down since she was 21. Your mum was only two months old. The winter Elsa taught you to play solitaire, your parents and sister had been dead for almost a year, and you already began begun to forget their faces. Although you cook for her, do her laundry, bathe, and even dress her, it still feels like she's one. She's the one taking care of you. You close your eyes and almost feel Elsa stroking, Elsa stroking your hair. You're eleven years old again, kneeling next to her, her bed, crying your heart out. The doorbell rings. Suddenly, the bell rings, and you feel invisible force trying to drag you into the present. Let's look for the window. Those fucking kids, you mutter. First brat is followed by two more. We step on the, the hose and activate the bell for a second. For a second and a third time. You don't know what's come on over you, but you yelled some things at them and you're, you're, you're too ashamed to remember. 
You justify yourself thinking that they might be the ones who got into your garage that night and stole some parts of the replica, replica machine gun you're, you're building. You won't let anyone mess with your project. The Winans Steam Machine Gun is your jewel of your collection. The kids yell at you, yell at you, old freak, and laugh, sheltered by the distance. Deep down, you know that it can't be that it can't be them. How would they know which parts of the machine gun were worth stealing? Anyway, the guard dogs being the guard dogs being brought over in a few days, and you'll be able to stop worrying. Better check the hose. You think about what someone told you at the bar about replacing the hose with a thicker one so that it could only be activated by the by the weight of a car. And what happens if those kids jump with their bikes and land on top of the hose with one of their wheels, you ask? Kids are always going to find some way to bust your balls, they replied. Go back inside. You try and calm down. You look at the cells and think of the solitaire your grandma taught you. Your grandma always said that everyone has their place in the world, and that people keep dancing around it without ever reaching it. To win this solitaire, you'll have to stop dancing. Go quiet. You know that the chance of winning are incredibly low. Almost zero. You can't bring yourself to turn over the next card and decide to start sorting the cells instead. Doing simple jobs builds up your self-confidence and provides you some illusion of control. Grab something from the upper self, grab something from the middle self, grab something from the lower self. Let's go for the low there. Yeah. Aim high. We'll go with the bottle. Something from the middle self. Replace the can. And we'll put that... Yeah, there we go. And we'll replace it on the lower self. Put that out at the top. So it's all lovely and organized. Good. You mutter one type of product on each shelf. And we've got the achievement, illusion of control. The car pulls up. You scratch your head. This time, shorting the cells doesn't help. You feel the same urgency as before and you can't think of anything else. Is the card going to be red? You need it to be red. Suddenly the air seems heavy and you find it a bit difficult to breathe. You turn to glance over your soda. Three men in, in black are staring at you. Through the window you see a black Cadillac by the pump. Yes, you, you stutter. You wish you'd asked them how they got into the station without you hearing the door open. Or how they left the car there without the bell ringing. But that trembling yes was the only thing you could manage to utter. The moose, says the man. The moose, you say? After a few seconds of not receiving any response, you decide to break the silence. Give them directions to the moose. Continuing to stare and st continuing straight and continue straight until the first crossroads and turn right. After a while, you see the bar past the barn with, a, with the painted cross. You can't miss it, you say. None of the men in black open their mouths. Every second that passes, the smile in your the smile passes the smile in your face feels more and more ridiculous. The moose. He repeats, you brought a woman, you brought a woman a whiskey. 
You don't know if it's the right move, but you try to relax and be more friendly. Do you know of a more effective way to socialize? You say? There's another silence. You told her the dream about your grandma, the man says. A chill runs through your body. It's been a few weeks since that night. And even though you had a good time with Martha and have no regrets, something about the way these men in black ask their questions makes you uneasy. What, what do you want to know, you say? Granny in the forest, says the man. One of the men further back lets out a, crack, a cracking noise. You look at him believing he's laughing, but the man in black's expression doesn't change. Yeah, ask them why they want to know. No one answers. It's like they're waiting for another response. Tell them your dream. My grandma has been bedridden for over 60 years, but in the dream I saw her running through the woods. Start from the beginning, says the man. Don't omit any details. You don't know if it's the way they look at you or because of a certain authority in their voice, but you tell them everything about the dream. Five or six weeks ago, you woke up in the middle of the night certain that something had happened to your grandma. You ran up to her room and Elsa wasn't in bed. The window was wide open. You ran to it and saw someone walking through the trees. It was her, and she was holding a rifle of the kind that your ancestors would have carried in a civil war. You tried to call out to her, your grandma started running and shot two or three times into the blackness of the forest. You were about to go down to find her when a winged figure with glowing red eyes appeared in front of the window and screamed. You stumbled backwards, and after hitting your head on the bedpost you lost consciousness. You woke up in your bed and remembered the dream almost instantly. You went up to the stairs two at a time and opened the door to her room. Your grandmother slept peacefully on the bedside table with a glass of milk you'd bring her every night and a deck of cards you used to play solitaire. During the days that followed, you tried to convince yourself that it all been a dream, even though you couldn't explain where the little scratches at the base of your skull had come from. Or the little stitches at the base of your skull had come from. After a few seconds, one of the men in black speaks again. The spots on her leg predate her birth, Holt. What? What is he talking about? Is he referring to the dozens of moles on your grandma's legs? What do they mean by saying those spots predate her birth? Elsa, Elise, so Elise, always makes the same joke when she when you sponge her calves. Be thankful that you have to clean my legs and not my, your grandmother's. Be thankful you can clean my legs and not my grandmother's. Grandfather's. According to what she told you, her granddad had been shot dead by an experimental weapon early in the Civil War when his legs were ripped to shreds. The winner's steam gun, son. A machine gun that doesn't appear in any book. You think about the replica that you're putting together in the workshop and you wonder if it was the men in black who stole these pieces. You're not telling anyone else about this visit, Holt, says the man. You start to complain when one of the men in black picks up a card from the counter. The top card of the deck. The crunch horrifies you. The teeth of the man in black seem to tear right through the simple paper. You des desperate, you throw yourself under the counter and look for the card. Your heart is pounding. You look out of the window and you don't see the Cadillac. You walk to you walk to where the car was parked a few moments ago. You step on the hose and the bell rings. What the fuck you say? Jack of Diamonds. Red, I knew it. You were thinking about the edge of the one you were thinking about the edge of the one of the men in black tore off. And you remember the noise he made when he chewed it. It was a, was it a threat? A warning? You wonder if you should tell your grandma a thing that happened or just keep your mouth shut and keep playing solitaire with a marked card.
chapter one, Lee. So that was an interesting intro. Um, how I would like to hear how you people, what you people think of this game so far. I like the presentation, the narrative of it. It really does have like that nineteen, sort of like nineteen eighties feel to it. But let's see what, how this goes. What's wrong? Says Lee. Victoria, I told you, it's nothing. Dam pause again. There's something she's not saying. The Mustang purrs. You shake your head, feeling sad inside. The sound of an engine hides no secrets. Lee, you're right, says Victoria. You bite your lip and sigh. Why is everything so damn hard? Victoria settles into her seat. Let's start over, okay? Where are we going? I'm always one for answering questions, like stuff like this, you always answer people, answer the question. It's a surprise, you say. Please, insists Victoria. No, Vic, have some patience. You'll never forget this night. Victoria giggles and you think this is the best gift in the world. For a moment you forget you forget all the previous discussions, your obsessions. A giggle, a friendly gesture, making someone feel good. Ain't rocket science. You look at the clock and you can't believe your eyes. You left your house on time, but you're pretty late. How could you step on the gas? Lee, says Victoria. Lee is quiet. Lee! You scratch the side of your head. Whoa, you really hate being told how to drive. Lee? Why, does, why doesn't she just tell you to slow down? You take your foot off the gas. Thanks, says Victoria. You're trying your best. You're really thinking Victoria... You really think Victoria could be the one. The one. Your dad once said the perfect woman doesn't exist. Couples form when people get tired of looking and just give up. You remember your mother's rants, all those women's names she rattled off as if they were part of an endless grocery list. You won't end up like him. Anything but that. You try to smile and force yourself to be more cheerful. You want a clue? You say? Yes, says Victoria. Victoria looks into your eyes and you feel a warmth on your face that takes you by surprise. You felt the same thing the first time you saw her in college. You keep looking at her for a few seconds that seem to for a few seconds that seem to last forever. What, do I have a booger? She chuckles. Where? You can't help but laugh out loud and have a hard time containing the urge to kiss her. Give her a clue. Yeah, give her a clue about the origin. Give her a clue about the date. Give her a clue about the myth. Let's give her a clue about the date. It happened a hundred years ago, you say. Victoria answers almost immediately. After all, you've been both been you're both majoring in history. The end of the Civil War, she says. Nope. Not in 1865. Okay, so we are in 1965. I thought that was the time. I mean, exactly a hundred years ago, Vic. Oh, let me think then. You're running out of time, you chuckle. There was a cholera outbreak in 1866, right? Cold, you say. And how twisted do you think I am to set up a date themed around a cholera outbreak from a century ago? Give her a clue about the origin. If she's good at... If she's majoring in history, pounding the date and the origins should help her massively, if not give her a solid clue. It comes from far away. Victoria makes a gesture for you to complete the sentence. You just shrug. It comes from far away, she mutters. I mean, that could be anything. Guess then, you say. The circus? Freezing cold, you chuckle. You give her your final clue. One world, one would be a source of superstition, but we think we're talking thousands. A source of superstition. A black cat. Victoria looks at you expectantly, desperate to be right. No, Vic. 
Just give me a minute. You won't guess it unless... You reach out to open the glove box and Victoria grabs your wrist. Better leave it to me, she says. Victoria opens the, bo um, the glove box and examines its contents. A folder, a book, a flashlight. What are you looking for exactly? Folder, the box, the flashlight. Let's go with the box. Tell her to look in the box. Victoria takes out the box and opens it. Let's see what you've been hiding. You think about saying something, but you're instantly regretting. Keep your mouth shut. Spare change, a lighter, a pack of cigarettes. Nothing to worry about, I reckon. Keep looking, please. Uh, let's go with the flashlight. Hmm. A book. 1966 Selby Mustang. A car handbook? No, not that. What else? Tell her to look at the folder. Victoria opens the folder and examines the documents. Some papers, insurance details. Do you want me to read some of this? You shake your head. Tell her to see if there's something more. I already got everything out. One second, there's this too. Victoria scratch, stretches out her hand and you finally grab the map you wanted. It was folded against the bottom of the glove box. You start talking and Victoria interrupts you. Hold that thought while I put everything back. You put the map on the dashboard until Victoria puts away the folder, the box and the flashlight. Vic, you know I like it tidy in here. In there. Ah, very funny. Vic flicks through the books he found. Red badge, red badge of courage. Haven't you read this book a thousand times already? You know what she's, she's, you know she's testing you. Vic knows exactly why you're carrying it everywhere. The novel that portrays the era you're obsessed with like no other. What the hell is this? Says Victoria. Suddenly you remember you're using the pencil sketch that Victoria drew of you in one of your classes as a bookmark. A sketch he begged you with tears in her eyes to destroy, and you swore you already had. Vic, I'm sorry. I swear. Watch out. You swerve to avoid this, 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 a sape in the road. Victoria looks back. Lee? You almost ran that thing over. You put your hand on Vic's shoulder, trying to reassure her. Victoria points ahead. Just keep your eyes on the road, please. She's doing it again, telling you how to drive. At least this time she came right out with it instead of just saying Lee disapprovingly. You try to control yourself, but it's hard. It's not just this last thing, but the build-up of all the small gestures. You take the map and throw it on her lap. Victoria raises her arms in disbelief. The, Le the Leonids, Victoria. We're going to have dinner watching the Leonids. Victoria says nothing. Forgive me for trying to arrange the perfect date. You try to keep silent, but you can't hold it in. A meteor sour. A phenomenon associated with the passage with the passage of the Temple Temple Tutter comet every thirty three years. Temple to Tuttle Temple Tuttle comet every thirty three years. Victoria keeps staring ahead. In eighteen sixty six there was one of the most spectacular meteor sours ever recorded. I saw some lilographs in the library. Victoria doesn't even move. Everyone makes a wish on the suiting star. Imagine how many wishes you could make with a thousand suiting stars through the sky. Victoria settles in her seat. You know what, Lee? Shut up, says Victoria. You've never heard her tone before from you never heard that tone before from her. Just keep quiet until we reach. She pauses as she examines the map you threw on her lap. Helt? Holt Station? You feel your heart pounding. Your hands are shaking. That's what she wants? For you to keep quiet? For you not to say a goddamn word? Your hands grip the wheel tight. All the preparations you made for tonight. Your friend Freddy had worked out the ideal place to see them in this their splendor away from the city lights. And when you noticed Hope Station was inside the area, you didn't hesitate. But now Vic has ruined it.
What the fuck, so you say? Something hits the Mustang's antenna. What the hell is that? Says Victoria. Stop, please. Stop! You slam on the brakes. Instinctively, you put a hand in front of Victoria to keep her from hitting the windshield. You get out of the car and find a dead bat in front of the headlights. The animal ha had hit the antenna and somehow gotten entangled. You can't believe it. What are the odds of something like this happening? Don't bats have some advanced echolocation system like a submarine sonar? What starts as a simple grunt in your throat emerges as a helpless scream. Fuck, you say. This is what I get for trying to do something different. We should have gone to the movies. Lee. Vic's whispering. It doesn't take long to see why. Over there. But a coyote is watching you from where the dark of the forest meets the light of the moon. Vic. We got this. It's not interested in us. You point to the dead bat. There are scavengers. You hear a growl that quickly multiplies. Suddenly you're surrounded. It's not the first time you face coyotes in the woods, but you ain't talking, taking any chances. When I say run to the car, when I say run to the car as fast as you can, you try to recall all the advice you've heard for situations like these. Make lots of noise, wave your hand, your arms around. One of the coyotes in front of you approaches. Yell and gesture, run to the car. The thing is, they're pack predators, so if you basically try and run, they'll chase. So, yell and gesture. Yeah, yell at one of the coyotes on, on this side of the car. Let's do that. Since it's the most, it's the bravest one, we should, all the others are watching that one, so that should be the alpha. So let's go with the center one. Another coyote advantage, you look into its watery blood sort eyes. Yeah. Okay, they're pushing. Shit, says Lee. Three coyotes advancing at once, yelling and waving your arms around won't be enough this time. The trick seems to work and all the coyotes back down. No coyote advances this time. It's your chance to go on the offensive. Yeah, get in the car. They're backing off now, so this is our chance. Run to the car. Now. You try to reach the car, but Ferocious Teeth intercept you. Enraged by your screams, the rest of the coyotes soon join the feast. Okay, we died. Horribly. Devoured by coyotes in the night. That's not great. Let's try again. Okay, yelling gesture. Let's try this side of the car. Yelling gesture. Okay, so they're... They're pushing up. I mean, throwing a stone would probably have been a good idea, I suppose, because it makes sense. Um, pack animals... Pack animals, if you base... They basically, it's all about risk and reward with predators. So if they think that the, the risk is too high, they won't take it. You crouch down and find four stones. You pick them up. Yeah, if we can drive, try and drive these ones off, um, the rest would back off because they're further away. Let's try. This one was the first one to move because he was the bravest. The Hoti retreats into the dark of the forest. The stones fly. The stone flies to the left of the Hoti, making the closest one also retreat.
Let's go with that one. One last coyote to worry about. The coyote retreats and you feel more and more confident. Run to the car. Now. You get in the car, close to the, close the doors, and Victoria starts laughing. The Hunt and Packs achievement was unlocked. Although you know the reaction is more adrenaline than anything else, you start laughing too and then kiss her. You start up the car and the V8 roars into life. You resume your trip. After a few wordless minutes, you suddenly remember something. Alt. Vic, says Lee. We're going to Holt's gas station. Victoria starts whistling. The, the doubts, the fears, everything seems a bit ridiculous now. You think about the plans you made for tonight and smile. You would really like to hear her whistle. Chapter 2 Victoria Oh, yeah, I'm liking this. I can see there are some puzzle elements to it, but it's most of it seems to be common sense. Which is a nice change of pace. Because sometimes visual novels have some really sort of strange concepts of how people react to things. Let's go. Victoria. Lee turns off the car and looks you in the eye. He smiles. And that smile seriously pisses you off. Smile or tell Lee. Ugh. Now let's tell Lee. Before you can open your mouth, Lee taps you on the leg. Wait here, Vic. I swear you won't believe it. You bite your lip and take a deep breath. You see him greet someone. Holt? Lee had written Holt Stace on the map he'd thrown on your lap 20 minutes ago. He'd written it... It by hand, it might as well have said Holt Station or Holt Station. L Station, even. Lee's handwriting has always been intriguing to you. You remember that time you, meant, you mentioned it to him, and he responded with a disproportionate anger. A nonsensical rant which involved several philosophical... Sofo, sofo, a nonsense, nonsensical rant which involved several philosophers of language. On all because you told him his handwriting was dreadful. But you know now know where all these reactions came from. That night you two got drunk by the lake. Lee told you that his father would have wanted to be born. That is, sorry. That night the two of you got drunk by the lake. Lee told you that his father would have wanted to be born ugly. After the initial surprise, you could have stifled a belly laugh, and Lee looked down. Looked down. For a few minutes, he didn't want to tell you anything else. You finally convinced him to continue. I've always gotten what I wanted just by smiling. Ugly people have to develop other muscles. Unfortunately, those those other muscles are the ones that last. You could have, couldn't believe those words had come out of the mouth of a flesh and blood human being. Maybe some poorly written character from a cheap romance novel, but Lee's father? You picture Lee that night throwing pebbles from the saw while telling you everything about his father's teachings. All that frustration. Was that the night you got you got pregnant? You've both been drinking. Suddenly you find it difficult to breathe. The interior of the car feels like it's getting smaller and smaller. You need some air. Say hi. Alt, right? Holt seems to st seem startled. Hello, says the man. This is Victoria, my girlfriend, says Lee. Be right back, Vic. You see them walking with a box that took they took out of the trunk, and from the effect Holt's putting into it seems heavy. What's inside the box? You're not stupid, you know that Lee has some business on the side beyond his work as an intern at the university. You heard some rumours and you have your suspicions. However, you never did too much digging. You prefer to keep it a mystery, something to make Lee a little more a little bit more interesting. You light a cigarette. Would Lee be a good father? And the question that you still haven't told you, and the question you still haven't had the courage to ask: Would you be a good mother? The clicks repeat at irregular intervals. 
Small moths approach the light to get electrocuted. Is that love, Victoria? You laugh and shake your head from side to side. Well, the thing with love is, like, the thing with the, the moths and the light, it's that it's hypnotizing more than anything else. I wouldn't say it's love, it's the fact that it's something much deeper than that. You think of all the manuscripts you've torn up. You've tried poetry, drawing. History seemed like an obvious choice. You don't need any talent to be a historian. That is definitely not true. The really, gr the really talented historians, the best historians, are uh, have a like history. To be a historian, you need talent. It's not no, not everyone can be a historian. In my personal opinion, so I don't believe that statement at all. Hello, says Victoria. The man talks to himself while holding something in his hand. Have you seen any winged creatures flying over the area yet? Says Louis. For a moment you think he's asking a, a, some kind of tricky question and remain silent. However, something about him tells you that he's generally asking. You look at the man bathed in the, in the sign of the streetlight and the scene fascinates you. Surreal, some of your old friends would have said, ones that organised poetry nights in red... Loire Treatment. Excuse me, you are... Oh yes, yeah, sorry, Hill. L Louis Hill. Writer. Victoria Green Greenberry. History student. We need creatures, Mr. Hill? Louis, please. Can I call you Victoria? You nod. I'm looking into about a dozen reports, Victoria. Numerous witnesses claim to have seen human-sized winged creatures flying over the area. Angels? Louis smiles, but the smile doesn't last long on his face. Look, look there, at the top of the trees. It won't take you long to find one. You aim at the area just... You, you aim at the area Louis just told you. Everything's blurry, so you decide to adjust the binoculars. To the left. To the left. No. Man, we're not getting anywhere with this. There we go. And I always hate puzzles. There we go. What the? He says. It was just a second, but you think you saw something up there. First sighting. Was it suggestion? I don't think they're angels, Victoria, says Louis. But before I tell you my theory, I need your help. Could you draw in this notebook what you just saw? Yes. At any other time, you would have refused with some witty comment. But there's something about Louis Hill that invites you to play along. You wonder if the fact that he presented himself as a writer had something to do with it. Draw the body. Draw the legs. Yeah, that's what we sort of saw. Draw the head. No, we draw the head. Yeah, that's what we saw. If 
Before giving it back, you write some notes further describing what you saw. Louis hasn't asked for them, but something that makes you feel less anxious. You never felt confident about your, your work. Hmm. Louis looks at the notebook for a few seconds. Reliable witness. But, um, so we got the achievement reliable witness. Louis looks at the notebook for a few seconds. So that feels too long. You think about the time you sold your sketches to your art teacher and how he embarrassed you in front of the rest of the class. Motherfucker, mutters Victoria. What? says Louis. Sorry. I was talking to myself. You can't help but bless. Victoria, says Lee. For once, you're glad to hear Lee's voice. All good? Although he seems to be talking to you, Lee keeps staring at Louis. Louis Hill, writer. Louis holds out his hand. Lee, Lee Miller, historian. Lee walks over and puts your arm around you, his back to Louis. You know he must have been annoyed that Louis introduced himself as a writer. Although it's hard for you to admit it, you feel you like to be hugged. You feel safe. You think you would also feel safe in your grandmother's arms or the arms of any of the other strong women in your family. But the heat of Lee's body, the hardness of his muscles. You remember all those biologists, biological, um, biologist arguments you hate so much and you can't help but smile. It's like you're cheating when nobody's looking. Come on, Vic, says Lee. Let's see this. Let's see the surprise. Close your eyes. You close your eyes and let Lee guide you. Now open them. So what do you think? Romantic dinner for two under the same meteor sour but amazed our ancestors. You instinctively put your hand and hand to your belly. And when you realise it, you quickly put it to your pocket. You look at the dog tied to the post. That dog growls into the dark. I think this is a good... Uh, I don't know if I can actually end at this point let's just check nope i have to start the next chapter okay so chapter three halt you've known louis hill for some months now but that folks will be the next part of the story um let me know what you think i like this game i really do um it scratches that like that visual novel itch that I have ever since playing Scarlet Hollow. Um, so let me just like know what you think, and I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye, folks.